Shabbat Shalom. It's good to see you. We're getting close to the holidays. A lot of anticipation, feeling, spirituality, and beauty in the air. And uh, it's wonderful to be together virtually. And we're going to start, as we usually do, with an opening song, Shalom Aleichem. Let's sing together, Shalom Aleichem. Shalom Aleichem, Malachi Hashari, Malachi Elion, Mimelech Malachi Hanakim, Magadosh Baruch Hu. Boachem le shalom, malefe ha shalom, malefe yehoyom. Vimelech malefe ha nazim ha kadosh baruchu. le shalom, malefe ha shalom, malefe yehoyom. what a joy it is as Shabbat is in to be able to join together to be one community. And we sing of oneness when we sing the Shema. We talk about the unity of God, but it's also the unity of everything because God is connected to all and everything. So uh, the interconnectedness of everything becomes one as we sing Shema. <laughs> Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Baruch Shem, Kevon Malechuto, Leolam Moed. Song of Freedom something to lift our spirits. We need that all the time. And the Micha Mocha is the perennial. It's the central song of freedom, not only in Jewish tradition, but has influenced cultures all over the world. These words from Torah, words from our tradition, Micha Mocha, our song of freedom. <laughs> We take a moment for uh, private prayer and meditation. And sometimes call this in a Jewish tradition, Hit Boda Dut, speaking out our deepest longing before God. So we have the opportunity because uh, online, you can put us on pause, take all the time you need. The idea is that sometimes by speaking out loud, we, we say things that we don't even realize 
are fully thinking. We can really get somewhere deep if we just uh, turn to that place in our heart and take a moment of private prayer and meditation. So much of the world around us is in turmoil. There's a lot of confusion and misunderstanding and ignorance. And we pray this Shabbat uh, that we can bring Shalom into the world. And so we sing these words, O Say Shalom, together. O Say Shalom, Shalom Bim Roma, Uyase Shalom. We turn to a prayer for our planet, every in the planet, all of the people, all of the flora and fauna. Dear God, help us celebrate your awesome creation and all the life on the wondrous planet of Earth. Help us feel connected to all of life on this small blue planet. Life is living us. Creator of the universe, help us understand that to master our world means to take responsibility, not only for ourselves, but for all the creatures on Earth. Help us use the power you gave us to build a better living world and not casually destroy the beauty we have borrowed from our children. We are the stewards, your partners in creation. I call on you for help and guidance. Our God, God of our ancestors and of our children, in this time of climate crisis, help to preserve life, protect it, and defend it. We owe it to our children, those born and those yet to be. If not for us, then for them, dear God, guide us on our journey. With those beautiful words, we recognize that not only does our planet need healing, but some of us and our friends and family need healing. Healing of body, mind, and spirit. And I know because you tell me that this service is healing for many of you. And that makes us feel so good. And I hope that the words that we say and the songs that we sing and the prayers that we recite continue to heal, continue to uplift, continue to inspire. And um, as we think about all of our friends and family who are in need of healing, we sing these amazing words in this memorable melody, Misha Berach. Shabbat 
There is a lot of darkness out there these days. What's going on in Kenosha is just one example. I hope to go up to Kenosha this Sunday uh, to be with an interfaith group of clergy and supporting my friend, Rabbi Dina Feingold there. You don't need me to remind you of the other examples of darkness that surround us. And our Torah portion for this week, Ki Titze, seems to match that dark with its warlike verses. There are more than a thousand verses in the Bible that deal with war. There are, of course, some verses that tell us to pray for peace or ask us to seek peace. But honestly, you don't even need verses like those if there wasn't an almost constant conflict in our history. For our ancestors, fighting was a normal activity. And there was no United Nations or League of Nations or really anyone else mediate those struggles. So Kititse, our portion, begins and ends with laws regarding war. The end of the story is the story of Amalek, Israel's sworn and eternal enemy. It reminds us to be vigilant. You know, one of the young men who was killed the other evening by that really young vigilante was named Joseph Rosenbaum. He doesn't come from a Jewish family. Nevertheless, there are anti-Semitic posts about him because of his name. So we have to be vigilant about anti-Semitism. That's the role of the ADL and organizations like the Poverty Law Center to see the many places where anti-Semitism rears its head to combat it by taking the darkness and bringing it into the light. And then the beginning of this portion says, when you go out to battle against your enemy and Adonai your God delivers him into your hands and you take him captive. So we can't deny that our ancestors were militaristic. They fought for their independence for a millennium. They turned away the Assyrians from the wall of Jerusalem. They rebelled and conquered the force of Antiochus in the story of Hanukkah. They cost the Roman Empire dearly in rebellions in the first and second century. But the loss of Jewish lives and the enslavement and displacement of our people was so cataclysmic during those uprising against the Romans that the survivors actually reformed Judaism so as to avoid militarism. So what are we to do when we are left with these militaristic texts? Our tradition teaches us to read them in a figurative way, an individual spiritual way. These texts convey a less obvious message. Commentators note that in our portion, when it says, when you go out, it's written in the singular, the singular version of the... We don't exactly have this in English, except for where I'm from in the South, where we say y'all, right? The, the collective you. But that's not what's used in the Hebrew. It's the singular you. When you go out to battle and God delivers him into your hand and you take him captive, the enemy here is also singular. So this is not a battle about armies. This is much more personal. It's actually about what you or I do. It is an interior battle. We have some primal, dark urges. We see them on display in the violence in Kenosha. 
We see them in a hypocrisy of someone who claims to be a moral arbiter like Jerry Falwell Jr. For those who are truth for their own ends. But there is some of that darkness in each of us as well. The Hasidic master from the 19th century, the Svasis, teaches us that to understand this text as a reference to the daily struggle we face to do the right thing. He said there's holiness in everything, but it's all secret and hidden. Every day we are engaged in an internal battle to find that holiness. And thank God Shabbat comes each week to help us respond to these daily struggles, to give us a little peace and recognition that God is with us. The Svas Emes reads this as our struggle against our inner darkness, our Yetzer Hara, the inclination to do bad things. Our battle is internal, and with God's help, we can take that inner darkness captive. We can overcome our tendency to make bad choices. It's a difficult battle. We don't win all the time. We can't win without an ally. We are only human. If we think we can win this internal war alone, we are probably fooling ourselves. When we allow the God within us to give us strength, then we have the power to harness our Yetzer Hara and control our bad impulse. One could read the Bible and its thousand verses about war and think we're doomed. Doomed to violence between nations, violence in our streets, but that's not true. If we read these texts as the guide to our own internal struggle for goodness, justice, and peace, then we see that we can overcome the darkness. When we take control of our hatred and fear, we can embrace compassion and peace, as Shabbat calls on us to do. We bring light into the darkened world. Can you hear that song? May this be God's will. Amen. Those stirring words, uplifting our body and inspiring us to act and think and lead, we turn now to remember. Remembering our loved ones may have also inspired and led us. And I invite you to think of them, say their names to yourself, reflect on their life as together we say the words of the mourner's Kaddish, the Kaddisha tone. Yitkadal, Yitkadash, Shemei Rabbah, Be'oma, Divra, Chirute, Be'amlich, Malchute. Chayechon, Uyomechon, Uchaye de Ho Beit Israel, Bagala, Ubizman, Kari, Vimru, Ame, Yehe, Shame, Raba, Mevorach, Leolam, Lome, Omaya, Yit Barach, Vishtabach, Viet Paar, Viet Ramam, Viet Nase, Viet Adar, Viet Ale, Viet Alal, Shme de Kudisha, Barihu, Leela, Minko, Birchata, Vishirata, Tushbechata v'nechemata, dami ran v'alma v'imru, amen. Yehe shlama rabba min shemaya, v'chayim alenu v'akho Yisrael v'imru, amen. Ose shalom v'imroma, uya se shalom, alenu v'akho Yisrael v'imru, amen. May God, the source of peace, send peace to all of us who mourn, and comfort to all who are bereaved, and let us all say, Amen. To close off another beautiful Shabbat service, we'll turn to uh, words of Ein Kelohenu, and echoing uh, Rabbi Ike's comments, God is that ally for us in, in the struggle for goodness. So let's sing these words together, Ein Kelohenu. En kelo heinu, en kadoneinu, en kemo keinu, en kemo shienu, mi kelo heinu, mi kadoneinu, mi kemo keinu, mi kemo shienu, no delelo heinu, no delandoneinu, no delemo keinu, no delemo shienu. Baruch Eloheinu, Baruch Adoneinu, Baruch Malkeinu, Baruch Moshiheinu, 
Good to be with you guys and uh, look forward to being with everybody in person one of these days. Shabbat shalom.